like this. We're going to start the recording. So, uh, we're going to have a little bit of fun with this iris. You are totally welcome to work with the colors that are here, but I'm going to encourage you to play around with color if you feel like it. Uh, so we're going to work on the drawing as always. Um, we're going to, and we're going to, to make sure that's good. Uh, you're going to see that irises have a lot of structure. So what do I mean by that? That's not like other flowers. What I mean is there's only one, two, three, four, five, six petals, right? Instead of the zillion one. petals there are in like, at least in this one we can see one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven, right? Like, but like they're, they're very big shapes. They don't have lots of little, and, um, and these structures, you'll see there's a nice value differentiation between them, right? So when we go to the darks and lights, people get kind of obsessed with this bit or this bit or what's happening here and think they have to do it. You're gonna find you don't need to do very much. So the, 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 the shape is, and the other thing is that the petals all have a very strong structure, meaning they have hard edges around the edges of most of them, right? So there's less of this, you know, when we've been working with daisies, when we work with sunflowers, there's all these sort of groups of petals and some are soft and some are hard. And it's, you know, it's hard to tell, like at, there's a lot of sort of softness and hardness, which is hard to capture. But irises ha have this structure that's much easier than a lot of different flowers. So um, we'll be talking about that today. And the only other thing I wanted to mention, because it's been an issue this week in class, is um, I'm noticing as students are making mistakes, particularly in drawing, I'm noticing there's kind of an unconsciousness about it that I wanted to talk to you about. So, I had a student who was drawing a face, and for those of you who know about faces, um, the eye line is always, where the eyes are is always halfway down the face. It doesn't look like it should be that way, but it is that way. And so she was drawing a face and she was, you know, she had located the eye line and she had located the halfway point. And then she still put the eyes well above the halfway point. She put them in the wrong place. And she's like, I, I'm trying to figure out why I did that. Where's my measurement? I measured it. And I said, this is what happened. You ignored the measurement. Why did you ignore the measurement? Because your left brain tried to jump into control. So what is your left brain? Your left brain is your verbal conceptual side. Think about what that means. The left brain means place the spotlight here. The left brain means that like, I have a word attached with this. So I know that this is a hand. I might have five different words in five different languages. I might be one of those people, right? Like who knows it? You wish. So, yeah, I wish, <laughs> right? I totally wish I'm like saying that. I can't even like, I can barely speak one. Um, <laughs> um, so, right, so, right. Uh, Diana has like, you know, uh, several different words for hand. Sandra, several different words for hand. The rest of us are thinking, right? So you have to have in your mind a picture of a hand and a concept about the hand to be able to communicate, right? So to be able to say hand, and we all know what we're talking about. Like, you know what you're talking about. You don't only just know the word hand, like what it is as a noun. You know what it means to give somebody a hand you know uh, how to hand it to someone, right? You know all these uh, secondary definitions about the hand. So now I'm gonna add another one, which is, is my hand bigger or smaller than my head? You're frozen. What? No, you're frozen. No, you're not frozen. Is my you're hand not? bigger or smaller than my head? You are frozen for me. You're frozen. You're not frozen for frozen. me. Weird. You're not frozen there for me. There you go, you're good now. There you go. Okay, all right, weird. Um, <laughs> My hand is, is my hand bigger or smaller than my head? Smaller. Smaller, right? Okay, what about now? Do you see what happened? You can't answer that question right away. What happened is your left brain is so quick to add concepts to its verbal, to this conceptual idea of what a hand is, that it has it very strongly in its mind. And when I move the hand, 
you can clearly see the hand is bigger in this position. You can clearly see it. But in your, your left brain, you've already sort of filed away, oh, the hand is smaller than the head. So can you see how this can be confusing? So we are in left brain from the moment we start to, we're born till we learn to talk. And left brain is dominant. It takes a lot of time to learn language, to assign ideas, to learn how to communicate, right? To make all those processes kind of automatic. So we're kind of automatically in that left brain verbal conceptual side all the time. We're always there. When I introduce a right brain concept, so the right brain doesn't give a shit about what this is or what this is. The right brain cares about spaces, like shapes in relationship and space. That's a totally different thing. So you need to evaluate the hand in a totally different way. Here, if it's in the right brain world, if this thing is farther back, it's smaller. As it gets here, it gets bigger. And as it comes forward, it gets bigger, right? So you have to evaluate the hand in a different way when you're learning to drive. You have to evaluate everything in a different way. But observe that the left brain does not like to be stopped. So if the left brain wants to define and control and have ideas about things, right? And those ideas are often wrong when it comes to drawing. <laughs> I guess it's not relative enough to help us decide. Does that make sense? So the reason that this student put her eyes above her measurement is that her left brain said, no, 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 that's not where they go, they're higher up. Without even consciously knowing it, that's what was happening. This is why I emphasize measurements so much. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. So as you find, this is a lot of what happens. You end up making mistakes and not even knowing that you're making mistakes because you're spending so much time like uh, take, taking in these verbal ideas which you've stored inside your head and applying them to the situation. Right. That's why I argue it. It helps not to call this thing a thing. <laughs> it helps not to even call these things anything. And here's another question. If I have my hand, let's say, right about here, should I draw my head first or my hand first? Your hand. Anybody Shh. think the head? Head. Head. No. Okay. Why do you think the head? Is that you, Marianne? You know that. Hi. Hi. You can't draw the head first because you can't see the head, right? You, you've got to draw the thing that's in front first. I mean, you can draw them both as one superstructure, right? But when you're drawing, you draw what's in front first because you can't draw what you can't see. So the reason people say head is because there's actually a value difference you're making. You're making a different, ah, it's bigger than the hand. Ah, it's more important than the hand. There's more things going on. I should draw that. Um, it doesn't help when you're evaluating like subjects in space. You know what I'm saying? There's all kinds of things in the left brain uh, verbal conceptual style that won't help you, right? As you're trying to construct things. Does that make sense? Yes. Do you catch yourself doing it? So I'm just trying to get you to catch yourself in the middle of like, uh, and just be aware that the things that we have to do as a drawer require us to like back out of our understanding of these objects. They're all relational depending on where they are, where they are next to each other. That's why it helps to think about them as shapes. That's why it helps to think about them not as what they are. That's why it helps to draw upside down. Because at, at some point in every painting, I work upside down. Not me personally, the painting goes upside down because it's easier to see the shapes. Uh, I, uh, the last time I got my eyebrows done, which was way too long ago, uh, I noticed that my eyebrow technician, once she did my eyebrows, she looked at them from this side and then she came around to the back of the chair and she looked at them. She looked at my head upside down. I don't know if anybody's seen me do it. They're doing, she's doing that to see if the shapes match when she's looking at them upside down. It's a drawing thing. That's a drawing thing. So that's what I want to just tell you. As you're going through this, this is what's happening. After you practice it, it becomes more natural and it works more in concert with your left brain. 
your left brain and your right brain work, your left brain isn't so competitive to try and tell you what's going on, but it's like exercising a muscle, right? You have to kind of exercise it a lot till you get into that zone where you automatically do it. Is that lecture over? <laughs> Everybody get that? I just realized some people I think are not really getting it. And we have people at varying, varying stages of where this is happening. And I watched it happen like three different times this week. And I was like, why, why did you, you measured and then you ignored the measurement? What happened? Oh yeah, right. Your left brain is still telling you, nope, eyes are up here. So even though I have my line here, I'm gonna put my eyes up here because that's where it looks like they are, right? That's, that's just, it's, um, you, you know, you just gotta say left brain, Bye-bye. <laughs> so having said that, let's move to one of the most delightful subjects uh, of the week. I'm gonna replace this. So we'll start with the drawing, right? We're gonna go to this. We'll start with the, does anybody have comments about that, by the way? I don't mean to like totally dominate the stage here, but I just, I want, you the teacher. Yeah, I know. I guess I have to, right? Like somehow have to describe this. A any thoughts on that? Does that make sense to you? Does it like, is it like, oh yeah, that makes, that's yes or no, or that seems wrong, or I don't understand. That makes sense to me. All right. I wanted to say I was really struggling with that because I went to the first of those, um, you know, copying the masters. That's yeah. Classes. And the way she does it, because it's in a physical room, she's got the picture up the front. Oh, good. And, you know, but I don't have something like this. So good. Because yeah, you have to measure. You have to measure. Right. Oh, Jackie, this class is so perfect for you. It's killing me. And I've just. It's killing you. <laughs> That's the good part. That's the good part. This, this woman is making is, is pushing you to the next steps. Uh, so when something is projected up on the screen, I'll just show you that really quickly too. Um, when, when you're doing this, so you can start by watching my arm here. You can see that my arm is straight, right? And my pencil, I'm holding my pencil like kind of flat right? Straight up and down. And if I want to check the size of something or find out where the halfway point is, do you see what I just did here? I marked my pencil where my thumb is and I went up. Oh yeah, I can see the halfway point is right about here, right? You have to keep going back and checking. So what I'm doing on my right side, I'm not touching my paper at all. I'm just holding my arm out straight and I'm measuring it. I'm measuring it. This is what people are doing when they're doing this, right? So observe what I'm not doing. I'm not pulling my arm back halfway through. I'm holding my arm straight. I'm going straight up and down. I'm going this way. I'm going that way. I can't go that way. I can't come this way. So I can't have my pencil push that way or this way because that will flex and change my measurements. So that's what you have to start doing. And, and you'll have to, Jackie, go back and check a lot. I'm mm -hmm. going to check this again. It's weird for me because I'm like, oh. So what you see me doing is I can put my hand on it and yeah. write on it because you guys are beginners, right? So this is how I'm starting out to show you this. But ultimately, this is what you have to do. And so if anybody wants to, remove your, your printout and try doing that from the computer screen. So if I'm sitting in the classroom across from it, I have to do that with my pencil. You have maybe. to do that. Yeah. And I generally like to find the halfway point. Uh -huh. right? uh, so in this particular case, yeah, tell me, where is it? See if you can find the halfway point. Just from um, the screen. Yeah, just from the screen. Try looking at the screen. All of you, try it. Try standing back from the screen, holding your arms, arms uh, straight. And I'll ask you a couple of places. You look, and then I'll ask you. Is the halfway point here? Oh, gosh. Nope. No. Uh, is it here? Yeah. No. I'm closer. You're closer. Closer. It's really kind of right here. Yeah. Yes. Right? It's yeah. right, uh, maybe about here. 
right from here, yeah. right? So excellent. So see, now you're starting to do, this is like something I can get you to practice too. So if you, Jackie, if you want to do that, you can practice that in our classes by not printing out something, right? And just standing back and- I like my printout. I know. Our crutches are nice, aren't they? <laughs> nice. But that's what people are doing. So yes, that's the steps that you are jumping up to. It's wonderful. This teacher is going to teach you so much. Okay. You're going to get a lot out of it. It's okay if it feels awful and you're not doing it right at first. Remember, this is a whole way of thinking, right? That's totally different. But that's exactly what you need is the next level up is that evaluation. And that's not guessing. Yep. Right? It's not guessing. It's like actually kind of measuring, which is why I emphasize measuring so much, but that's how you do it. From there, you'll be able to go on to 3D subjects because you can do the same thing mm -hmm. with an apple on your table. Mm -hmm. Ooh, right? Scary. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> All right, let's get to it. Um, uh, so, um, we've got our halfway point here. Right, so I can draw my line kind of down the middle. Here's the top, here's the bottom. Let me double check that. Yep. And then at the halfway point, let's draw, let's draw it all the way across. And what I'm gonna do is draw it. Actually, the first thing I'm doing is kind of boxing this thing because it, it sort of almost fits in a box, right? So I'm here. In this particular case, I'm doing this because I think it's easier to see. Let me show you what I'm doing. I'm drawing straight up. Yeah. I'm gonna draw straight up. This is one way of looking at it, right? So I can draw a line here. I've got the line across. I can draw this line here kind of boxing this because it's taking up almost the whole space. It's naturally boxed on this side. So when I draw my line across, I can draw it across to the whole box. I know this is how wide this piece will be. Got it? This is the widest it'll be. It's not necessarily the widest here. It's the widest down here. But that the halfway point shows you kind of where to put it. Uh, and then um, and in this particular case, I kind of drew, I didn't make it easy for you, did I? I wonder if I can move that over a little bit to make it more of a, here, just out of curiosity. Like six and a half. This is kind of the halfway point. I can put that middle line anywhere. I want in a in a thing like this. I can measure from anywhere. So that means it's equal on this side to this side. So I find the halfway point. I can find the quarter point. You can do the same thing. Hey, Lydia. What? My vision doesn't allow this. My I have perception issues. So oh. I have a I have a um, squint. I think I have a uh, an app called um, grid uh-huh it does it immediately for me uh it's not going to grid it the same way though but i mean yeah i mean you can try using it i don't think it's going to grid it the way i'm particularly gridding it because i'm not using the whole paper i'm not using the whole subject i'm just really okay. literally doing the flower so i don't think that's going to help you very much try okay. squinting pat try squinting so these are the quarter points but is that right one two three comes down a little bit further there we go flower, flower bedroom than the one we did last time yeah it's nice yeah it's, it's so really pretty nice. but i'm stuck with mine <laughs> you can finish it yeah. so i'm trying to make it straight so these are quarter points which means so that means i can check this Right, and basically the whole length of this pencil is the width. And I can check that against here. Looks like that comes up to, looks like the width comes up to, I'm gonna mark it in pink here. 
right? Which I can also do by holding my arm out and checking it like this against this arm. It's a little bit hard to show, but let's see. One, right? So the width is about where that pink line is. So I could start out my drawing kind of running a line down the middle of the paper. Um, I'm going to start it here and end it here. Uh, I could find my halfway point. I'm going to guess this. Oh, that was long. <laughs> down here. Better much better. Look at how raw off I was in my first one. Partly it's my uh, desk kind of tilts away from me. So it's a little bit harder for me. I'm not looking exactly down on it unless I shift into a certain position. Um, and then I can find my quarter points. Once I find one quarter point, the halfway point of one, it should work for below as well. Right. And then about here where I'm putting the star should be the width at the halfway point. I'm just going to measure it because it's not quite, it's almost seven. Here, here, you don't have to use a, see how I'm kind of scooting it a little bit as I'm adjusting, I'm like, okay, I want this side to be equal to this side. And I want this whole length to be equal here. So go ahead and give me those measurements. Um, yeah, and if you want to challenge yourself, don't make a printout. Just hold the uh, computers, make the computer screen come straight up and measure. I'll give you the measurements because I think it's easier to focus on, but ultimately, that's what you're moving towards. Well, I just realized my printout cut off anyway, so it's not very useful. Yeah, it doesn't work. Yeah, right. So nice Tell to me see about you, Marianne. The cross line again. How did you get that? This what? Yeah, that it's one. Nice yeah. To see you. Um, oh, nice to see you too. It's nice to be here. Um, we're we're excited, but also sad about Gina leaving. But I told her she should still come to class. Oh, good. <laughs> Yeah, I'm working on a tree, I'll show you. Yeah, let's see. Um, I do that, Pat, by measuring this distance. I'm just using a ruler because it's easy to show and showing how far up it goes, the vertical. And it comes up to about here, not quite the quarter point here, a little bit below. So then I mark it on here about the same place. And then I can take it back out Got it? No, I don't understand that at all. What? Why do you have the second mark on the vertical? That's nice, Marianne. Why do I have the second mark? Because this is how high up the width is on the vertical line. And this why did you make line... the right of the, of the horizontal line in? What's that? Why did you stop the line horizontal line in from the right edge? I didn't stop the horizontal line in from the right edge. Oh, because, oh, 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 because this is the, the farthest edge that the flower goes out. See? So you measured that same distance to the right? I think you're overthinking this, Pat. I, I, I just want don't to, understand yeah, why you right. So I Right, I think you're overthinking this. So let's start over. I drew this line straight up to create right. a box around right. the flower of its largest edges. I put this line here because this is where the outer edge of the petal goes. The, the flower goes no farther than here. Right. Okay. But I'm talking about the right edge. What about the right edge? There's, it it there's, doesn't go all the way to the end like the leaf It's does. white. It's white. Yeah, it just stops here. It just stops here. Never mind. I'll just figure out something. Well, no, but tell me, I, I just don't understand what you're asking. Well, in the picture that I'm looking at, the, the purple, the dark purple leaf goes all the way to the edge of this of the sketch. 
or of the photo? Oh, it prints out, mine sort of prints out here if you want to. You can add it in if you want to on the outside, but it just stops here. So I'm just stopping it with the slight edge. You're talking about this one here? The right edge, this is the right edge. I know, yeah. So this is what you're talking about? So you, you're just making the right, not all the way to the edge of the paper? Yes. Okay. Because right. that's what I have here. Okay. Yeah. If you want to, you can expand it a little bit longer. Okay, then, okay, ready for the next part? So you're wondering why I made this as wide as I did. That's what you were asking, right? It's narrow, actually. Well, it's, okay. you're wondering why it is the width that it is. Yes, yes. Okay, so I put it here because this is the natural end. I don't have the actual edge. I suppose I could put it here, but I don't. I mean, I could bring it out here. It's like a millimeter difference. It's not that much. So I'm not really worried about that. I'm more interested in this because it comes out further. I'm not okay. as worried about that, right? That's okay. not as much of a worry. You can just kind of extend this out if you want to, but, um, okay. but this is the most important because it comes, we, bring, we come in from here and we wanna know how far out everything extends on, on, on this side because we can see right. the whole thing. Okay, sorry. Okay. All right, so now you've got it. now you've got it, right? But this thing you have the width of this, you understand how to get that and compare it to this height, right? You were just wondering, yeah, I got it. It's a good question. It's a good My question. left brain was just going crazy. Uh-huh. And worrying about something that wasn't that much of a worry. But I get it. I get why. I get what was happening. Um all right, let's see, Jackie. One, two, four. Uh, yeah, that looks pretty good, Jackie. All right, good job. Anybody else want to send it in? Your measurements? If you want to, you can also, you know, kind of draw a straight line up and down here. To create that rectangle. Right. Just like lining this up. So this is the box upon which this flower is contained. <laughs> that looks a little bit awkward here. It doesn't look quite straight. Better. Yeah. So you can create yourself that little rectangle. And that's kind of helpful because you're going to do the outer shapes next, right? You're going to do the... Mm -hmm. Oh, better pen. There we go. You're going to draw these outer shapes. And observe that I'm not really... Drawing these all have little ridges. I'm not drawing them in. These have little fuzzy. I'm not really drawing that in. I'm more trying to get the outer shape. Okay, so Pat, as you observed, you're either going to bring your line out a little bit or you'll just stick this out a little bit past the line okay. on the right. Okay. And then down here. It's a good question, Pat. It is actually very good question. Right? But these are the shapes we're starting with. These, this outer shape is what we're starting with. So it helps to have the lines because like I can use them, right? Like right here, I can use this. To kind of create this triangle, which comes almost here, not quite. And then there's another line that comes in up and over. Oh, I think I went up too high here. Up here. Here. See that? So I can use my negative space here. 
here and here to kind of help define my petal shape without doing all the petals, kind of doing the outer shapes first. Essentially, it's almost like we're carving out of stone. It's almost like we're, um, like, car you know, like this is a block of wood and we're carving out the shape from the outside. I don't know if anybody's taken any sculpture classes. I've never, I never have. I have. Yeah. Yeah. It's a different process, right? It's this way of thinking. Yeah, you, I mean, you carve in, you go from- You carve there. in. So yeah. essentially we're doing the same thing. And Pat, thank you actually for um, asking this question because I realized I had it. There. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm always skipping a step and you're always catching me. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always jumping a step ahead and you're always catching me in that moment. It's really great. I appreciate it. I thought that. I was just being way too left brain. You weren't. You weren't. <laughs> you were trying to figure out a really valid question. Um, so it's good. Uh, it's good. It's really good. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. Um, we've got this side. So I'm looking at my, I'm looking at this space. Oh, I think I took it out too wide. Okay. Let's bring our little body in. When I'm looking here, it's good to find kind of start and end points. Do you see how far out I put this? That means this shape was kind of way too truncated, the negative space. So I came here and found kind of how close to the middle line does this start? It starts closer than I thought. This is just to say everybody makes things too big. It's just our natural inclination. I like to find endpoints too, so I can see that this kind of ends about this far. So that helps me. I like actually have a little, I guess it's a little connect the dots, but don't, that's a terrible thing to teach. By <laughs> <laughs> but it is a little bit like that. Okay, Pat, here's my little bloop. Okay. My little blip. So now I can kind of, I can just add that in kind of about where I think it is. I think I put it down too low. I need to bring it up a little higher. Lift up here. Notice my first one is down here. My second one's up here. That's better. Down in here like this. So it's all kind of about evaluating I know that this part kind of comes right above the um, quarter point, right? Because I can see the quarter point marked here. So some things are easy. You can use like some parts of this process, like this dip should line up with this. This bit should come a little bit above this. But sometimes you're just gonna have to lay it down, look, and then maybe try again. And I hope it hardens you to see that I'm trying again too. I have to try again several times. I don't always get it right in the beginning. We're going to be happy about that. You've been doing it so long and you make it. Yeah, right. <laughs> we had a hilarious. <laughs> no <breath. laughs> totally. You should have heard the conversation we had yesterday. Diana, we were talking about how um, like the most like masterful artists are always the best ones are always saying, yeah, I'm still learning. <laughs> so Julia said yesterday, how can I compete if they're like, you know, the best one in the business is still learning. <laughs> I can't compete with that. Um, uh, yeah, it, it, it's kind of a, um, I mean, where do we get with that conversation? I think that's actually good, right? We're not really in it for the easy. We're in it <coughs> for the learning. 
and the brain development and and all of the things that happen with that. So once things get easy, our brain stops working and begins to deteriorate. There you go. That's a nice, happy thought. <laughs> so helping everybody feel better today. <laughs> um, I so don't like my, my flowers. Send it over. What are you doing, Diana? She's working I'm on her doing other the rigging iris from the other day, and I it's mm -hmm. totally boring, boring, boring. Have you changed the colors? A little bit. Maybe you should change them a little more. That's uh, where the Diana magic usually happens. It's boring, boring. I've changed you the should glaze it. Glaze it. <laughs> I glaze changed it. the background like glaze so many it. times. I find the structure of irises so fascinating. They're almost ugly in a way, or weird. I don't want to say ugly. I want to say kind of weird. I want to say they're sort of weird. This one is a bit tricky. It almost looks like a person in some ways, Mine? like a weird looking person. No, everybody, I haven't seen yours yet. Hold on. I understand it. It's you know, I had a brighter background and it didn't work. And mm -hmm. I'm a struggling a little bit with mine too. I haven't really managed to get it to settle yet. Uh, let's see, Sandra. Um, Sandra, this comes out a bit more. You see how far out this comes? And oh, that's true. It comes true. out much more, yeah, harder, uh, wider. This looks pretty good. This is a little bit wider. You can see here. And not so wobbly. It's really more of a curve line out, like a little fat belly. Okay. Fat, uh, belly. fat belly. This looks great. Good, good. That's it. So just extend this out. Let's see. Oh yeah. Um I think you should uh add, I think you should go lighter in your petals, then. Yeah, tell me. Yeah. I think you should go lighter in your petals. I love. I tried the with the red the background, but it didn't work. Yeah, no. I think you need to go lighter with your petals. Um, what I would do is maybe do a kind of take a big thick brush, a raggedy one like this one, and streak on some white over it, right, with like ragged edges, so you let some of that dark come through. See if you can do at least with the ones in the front. You mean on the flower? On the on the lightest part of the flower, it needs to go lighter. Yeah. That and this is the continuing problem you've had all week. When you struggle with something, it's been a value issue, right? Like yeah. it's been uh, pushing the value. I, you know, I dislike white so much. That's why. Well, you don't have to do white, but it should be lighter. Yeah. So you got to figure out how to make it lighter. Yeah. So I whatever do. you do, make it lighter. Maybe yeah. make it a light yellow. And then let some of the purple come through. But it, these things are too regular. It's like yeah. little yeah. soldiers right in a row. Yeah, they and are. That's problematic. They are. Yeah. My, my suggestion would be to streak on a lighter color, which you okay. often have to get try by them. mixing a little bit of white. I'll try um, that. Yeah, try that. Yellow might look really cool because um, that looks pretty good, Jackie. This is a little thicker down here. Oh. Oh, so look here. You'll see yeah. that this comes down a little bit lower. Ah, it it comes out more. You've done this. See oh, how that's kind of coming. Angle. So bring it out a little bit more, which will make it a little bit wider. Oh, Otherwise, this looks pretty good. Thanks. Looks excellent, actually. Mine is above hers. Okay, let me take a look. Oh, excellent. Hold on. Looks good. Yeah, maybe the yellow isn't so bad. Right, particularly as it, uh, this is good, Pat. Good, good eye, good eye. I like good, it, Diana. Good, yeah. Uh, this is a little, this comes out a little bit more. Okay. Let's see what it, it kind of lines up with where the petal hits the middle line. Ah, wow, a lot more. Yeah, okay. isn't that interesting? I don't, I'm not totally convinced I got that right. And then if you look in here, there's this shape. 
right? You don't have that shape. You've got, this is, so if you were to look at this negative space here, that has to be between the bottom of the petal and the stem. Okay. If you okay. draw a straight, yeah, and, ah, Julia, good. Yeah, 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 looks good. Yeah, now let me see if I, see Pat, I didn't do that either. So I have to do it too. Hope that makes you feel better. I don't think so. Well, it, Mine has to I come keep out telling too. myself to look at the picture, not Leah's, Leah's drawing. Well, I, I have yeah, don't to... copy my drawing. Look at the picture. I'm still figuring it out myself, right? So here, I'll pull mine in. Yep, there we go. That's better. Yeah. Yeah, that's an, that's like that game of telephone. It's like that game of rumor. <laughs> like, except like it's the visual. You were copying my drawing. My drawing isn't quite right. <laughs> it just keeps going from there. But you see, I corrected that as well by looking at this shape. So everybody take a look at these. They help because it helps you get perspective. The other thing, and Sandra, you can do this is check this angle from the, the tip of oh, this I petal to it. here. Yeah, you can check it, right? By going, oh, did I get it far enough? It's also, everything is, this is how we kind of do this correcting. It's not like you get it right exactly on the first go. You just get it. But once we get this shape, everything else becomes easier. Everything else. So let's see. Let's use orange since I haven't used that yet. Now we can do the kind of inner petals, right? The bigger petals. Once again, I'm going for bigger shapes. I'm not doing everything, all the detail. I'm just kind of trying to delineate the petals correctly. Yeah, and that's why I like these this flower you have today much better because it's got it, a lot more going on that way yeah it's got a lot more going on yeah 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 but also i think it's good for you to think about this kind of constant pro this problem that plagues you because if you can kind of figure out a way to address it it'll help you yeah right with other things it's good to see kind of where uh, I was just, something happened to me recently. I just finished a painting, um, one of my fern paintings, but it was a much lighter forest. And um, I finished it, but boy, was it hard. It just ticked me off. It was like really hard. <laughs> and, and I finished it and I said to myself, I'm never going to do another one of those again. And then my studio mate came in and said, why not? Like, you're totally like, why are you avoiding going back to just because it was hard? <laughs> yeah, which, she's gutsy. <laughs> which puts me, which put me in my place very nicely. But I was like, oh shit, you're right. God damn you. <laughs> <laughs> it really was hard. I mean, I think I finally got the balance and she's like, the next one will be easier, right? <laughs> but I think it's because you didn't enjoy it. But I don't always enjoy it. I, I don't, how do I say that? Um, enjoyment is not always the point for me. Pushing no. skill is the point for me. So oh, very well, often, case. right? Like in this case, and also there's probably gonna want somebody who wants a second one. And if I only have one, I'll either have to paint it or, you know, they, it looked really nice with a friend, I guess, is <laughs> like the end of this idea but I just thought it was funny that I was like yep never doing another one of those again and she was like oh yes you are <laughs> so did you do another one uh, I'm starting one I'm starting <laughs> one I'm starting one I'm just trying to say uh you know when I whenever I say this is something you should work on it's always something that I'm working on too so I'm never telling you in absentia to work on something that I am not doing right this is like it's just interesting to observe where we have these struggles right like with our like where where we're like yep don't don't really want to do that but there's some value in doing it there's some value in doing it and <laughs> yeah melissa always tells me what's going on she will tell me exactly what she thinks
So now I'm starting to add in the shapes. Don't go for the most complicated ones. Now here's another tip. Don't go for the most complicated ones. Go for the ones that you can see really clearly. Like this is not a tricky one to see. And then when you get up here, you're like, okay, maybe I can see this shape. Right. I'll remove this and then you'll kind of even love your drawing more. I think part of the reason I didn't like it is that I didn't think it was as good as my other stuff. She liked it enough. I mean, I liked it enough to call it done. And that's also an ego thing, right? Like you want everything to be <laughs> like perfectly good, but that's not really how it works. You can't really get to the perfectly good, the perfect ones without having some uh, figuring out like problem solving stuff you got to do along the way. Yes, thank you, Art, for always making life more challenging. But also, thank you, Art, for making life more challenging. Yeah. Thank you for the torture. Yeah, thank you for the torture, Art. <laughs> It's a lot, Art. <laughs> Thank you so much, Art. <laughs> really appreciating that now, not. Mm. Okay, um, I'm just going to go get a cup of tea before I finish, you guys, you keep working. So I think this is what those masters who are saying, I'm always trying to push myself, what they mean by that, right? Why, what they are saying when as a, somebody who's really mastered quite a lot, what are, what's their goal? And I think that's good. I think that's a good way to think about it. Otherwise, um, things can get kind of, they lose their life. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it like I had my background now. It, yeah, it gets it gets so flat when you have too much mix mixing. Yeah, up. too much mix. Well, yeah, it becomes this kind of neutral, right? So, yeah. Yep, I totally know what you mean. Uh, and like I said, I haven't exactly resolved mine yet. So mine hasn't been entirely resolved yet either. I haven't exactly figured it out. I'll show you where mine is in a minute. All right. 
I yeah. okay. keep doing the background and it actually instantly is getting a little bit more life. Oh, well, there you go. So a lot of key, a lot of it is background. But I do think part of it is that uniformness of your foreground, of your subject yeah. too, right? Yeah. You cannot yeah. deny that. That is also playing a part. Yeah, and it's, but I also the composition is really, really boring. Mm -hmm. But I'll see if I can work through it. Otherwise, I just give up. I think I've ruined mine already. Ruined one. This is a complex one. Good. No, You're I just I way. did the background and it looks terrible. I, oh, you mean the pur thinking. purpley one? Uh, no, I run that past my brother and it. <laughs> you need and to he stop was running stuff by him. Back him. By him. I actually. Huh. He was, he was horrified. horrified. But I'd gone outside the lines of the iris with a background. And I said, I thought that it looks was, amazing. I said, but that was the point. And I showed him the one that the Australian woman had done. And he said, yes. He said, but that works because her iris is very detailed. And you is like, like not so detailed. Okay. But anyway, look, I'm going to make a, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that perhaps your brother is not who you should be showing this shit to right now. I know, but like, he is, um, but he is. Right. Is he an artist? I mean, he, he, in a way, he's not an artist, but he does collect some art. And he collects art. He collects okay. some, he collects a type of art, which is different from mine. He collects right. Japanese woodblock prints, but he right. is a viewer and uh, viewers. Yeah, are but he's not. Okay, so number one, there's a process happening that you're working through. I actually really appreciated that piece that you did yesterday because I see it as, a, as part of a, a, a cycle of things that's going to, I like it. I like the look of it. I like the improvement of it. I, that doesn't mean you can't, you don't, you don't talk about one piece. You never do. You look at like a whole bunch of pieces and see a, a progression. I really liked it. I just think that's kind of damaging because I think that that was one of the better pieces you've done. Mm -hmm. Most exciting ones. I thought it was going in a great direction. It's it's okay that it's not perfect. Yeah, it's better, Diana. I right, now I'm gonna do some contrast. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good idea. Half on the right there. There we go. I might try that as well. Actually, that looks great. Well, I'm going to try again because try again. what I did just now doesn't work. Okay. But that's okay, Sandra. It's I actually thought you were getting somewhere with it. I'm going to show you guys what she did yesterday because I actually really liked it. And I think you all are going to be like, what is he talking about? So she attempted this technique where, can you see oh, it? Oh, I like all? that. This is why, I mean, honestly. <laughs> I like the that. armchair, the armchair critics don't get to have a say because they don't fucking know. <laughs> they don't know. <laughs> they don't know. I don't you see. So Diana, she was. Uh, Tim, like can you it. share? Can you share I, the? I, I, wait, let, me, let me show you what I was trying to do. Like yeah, yeah, one. yeah. Share the one that um, you were working with. The concept. Share Which the one? one so we can see it. Which one? I said no one builds monuments to critics. Right? <laughs> which, one, which one do you mean, Leah? I I'll haven't show shown you yet. She hasn't shown it yet. I'm looking for it. Uh, I'm looking okay. for it too. If this I find is what, it, I've got it. This is the concept this, that she was going after. This is the concept. So see the concept? The concept is this teacher who does these um, painting. But as my brother pointed out, hers is exquisitely detailed Whoa, and mine is fuck, like... Fuck him. I'm sorry. Fuck him. Fuck him. Fuck that. You're, you don't get this in your first try. That's why this person is the teacher and you're learning. But so do you guys see where she's going with it? Yeah. Um, I loved it. I've never seen anything quite like it. I love the idea. I love the concept. And I love Sandra's first try. Um, you can go, I mean, you're going to keep going with it, but I wouldn't reject this out of hand. Do you see what I'm saying? He doesn't even know. You don't just do this. You spend some time learning how to do this. I don't know. I really, there's something. And before you even saw it, you kind of liked it, right, Diana? It has a kind yeah. of a... 
a movement to it. It's yeah. like the, it's yeah. like there's a kind of blending. I love it. I just love it. And just because you didn't nail it the way she did, doesn't mean that it's not going somewhere. So I, so try it again, but don't show him these because I think it's damaging for somebody to tell you that it sucks because it doesn't look like the person who's been doing it for 20 years. He didn't say it so meanly because yeah, he's not but a mean I know, person at all. But like you, I just don't, you're, you, you'll get there and you don't want to paint like her. Your idea is to paint like you using ideas yeah. and techniques and things. You can take this technique and put it in a direction that maybe will make her go. Hmm? Interesting. I didn't know you could go so loose with this. So anyway, sorry, there, my, my speech is over. It's just a defense of you. <laughs> anyway, I, um, I tried the alternative today and it was, and I think it's disastrous. I hate her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate it too. I like this better. So so I'm going to go it. back to, yep, to yep. this. Keep working on it because that's going somewhere. My that's thought, however, was that because it's an iris, you might be able to get away instead of doing it in purple and doing it in a very pale blue. Oh, yeah. Which would help the fact that it doesn't look like you went outside the lines, but you have a very a background that kind of melts into it. Then maybe, but maybe it would be too extreme. I don't know. You'd have to see. You'd have to try it. it I'd be curious. I don't really know. Um, I like the idea. I've just never. Here, hold on. Oh, the armchair critics. You're right, Marianne. <laughs> I know you're like... right. And that's it's... the only thing it's critical about, actually. But he doesn't, you, you're giving him like way more power. If I told you, that would be one thing. Diana told you that'd be one thing. I told but him actually, who doesn't my paint, paint, somebody who doesn't paint doesn't really have a right to say. They just don't know. <laughs> but he, he will represent a lot of people. Say if I were to put it on my friends on Facebook, a lot of people. Well, I Facebook wouldn't put Facebook. this one necessarily on Facebook, but I That's would like let me. it go. I would just let it go further. I would work it a little further. That's the, that's the point. No, that's what everybody... he said. He wouldn't put it on Facebook. Oh, but... well, but anyway. I said... Or put it on Facebook. I, I don't know. But it's like, the point is, I would put maybe three or four of them in a row to show how they evolve. But this is Maybe something that's evolving. But I liked it. I liked where it was going. So thank you. Yeah. I'm gonna continue experimenting. I did an experiment too. I'm gonna to send it to you in a sec. I might have overdid it, done it a little bit, but that's better than underdoing it. Well, it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing, right? Everyone's <laughs> like, okay, what are we going to throw in here now? <laughs> we've talked about armchair critics, we've talked about being good, we've talked about being bad. Okay, here is what I did. Let's see. Excellent. I like it. Wow. You know what I would do, though? I, yeah. Okay, so I have one, I like it, but I'm going to suggest one thing, which yeah. is that you push back, you kind of get rid of, you push right to the teeny tiny edge along this edge. Oh, I don't see, but let me. Okay, put sorry, on the. Um, let me put your arms. Right, right. You. Um, I was in gallery and I. Okay, so this orange edge. Yeah. Uh, I would push it back. So, so that it's only a little minor line. Keep yeah. it everywhere else. It's a little yeah. too much, right? Yeah. But just let a teeny bit. So push your yellows and your purples back into it. And how about the one to the right? Isn't that a little bit too much too? No, I like it on there because it's reading yeah. like a mid-tone, a mid-tone okay. shady, shady okay. section. I'll do that. So yeah. And then there might be one or two other places you'll push it out a little bit. So the trick with little like, you know, contours like this is not to overdo them, right? Yeah, so I, that's and I like, did overdo it. I mean, yeah, I yeah, yeah, but I like it. I, and I would keep it exactly the way it is on the right. I would not change that at all. I would just thin it out on the left so it's not so distracting. Yeah. Okay, I'll do that. Very nice. That was a very interesting, um, 
That's an interesting solution, Diana. I almost feel like you should try something like that with your tomato. <laughs> your tomato, but like I kind of like how that that's starting to come together. Um, yeah, but I it was think, it made it a little bit more fun. Yeah, yeah, it gave it a little bit more pump. And what a great color! I would have never get. I would have never thought of that. I really like. Um, I like. I like that solution. It's interesting. Adding just a little bit. It was so boring. So it had. Yeah, some... yeah. But this is how you always solve the problem. You splash in a mid tone. That's a that's not expected with a, an unusual color, right? Like something that's not exactly expected, but it works. So, Leah, I've, I've had to start my drawing again. I'm going to show it to you. Okay. Maybe you should keep them both, Sandra, so you have like two you can work on. Like, so if one is like kind of well, driving so you crazy. The other one uh, was actually on the hot press. Why don't you do both? I think I you should do it. both. I think you should do both. I think you should keep the first one. I'll experiment. And do I'll throw it away. I'll experiment with it. Yeah. But I didn't want to spend a lot of time doing a beautiful iris when I'd already screwed up a background. Right. Although it'd be interesting to see if you could like drift other colors on top of that or if you could. It's like dark in yes. some places. I don't know. It might be interesting just to see since you don't care. I might it's, play with it, but I'm not going to expend a lot of effort. Right. Don't expend a lot of effort. But sometimes it's fun to play around when you're when you have nothing. When you have already have decided, to yeah, yeah, it really helps like to have things that you can play with because you might even use that as your testing ground before you try it on your other. Team. Right. Um, because then you know, you can see what it looks like, you can see how it's working without like, you know, wrecking that one. And that's, I think, particularly important for watercolor. Um, wouldn't you be interested to see the mistakes of masters? I would love to see, for example, more of Monet's late paintings uh, after he had cataracts and in his eyes. And well, but painting more from how is that going to make us feel better if he had cataract? His latest stuff looks a lot different. He hated it. Most of it, he threw most of it away. But um, but he but a, a couple remain. But it's really interesting. It's different. It's like really different. Uh, he's not. He's ambivalent about it or hates it because he was a real perfectionist. So I love to see his late work because. Um, I'd love to see more of his late work. I'd love to see his mistakes. But if he was I'd impaired, like it. it's not like he's going to make his mistakes are going to make us feel better about our mistakes. I think you're, <laughs> <laughs> you're in a very like contrary mood today. <laughs> uh, sorry. <I'm> just... <laughs> I would love to see them because I like to see process. I like to see people make mistakes and then fix them. And I'd like to see the masters make mistakes and fix them. And um, he didn't like them, so he didn't really let very many, but I would love to see more of his late work where he couldn't really see. Um, because I think it, it's an interesting, he's almost painting from memory because he's painting the same things. So um, that, that's all I'm saying. I just what really a shame like to see for that. Painting, you know, well, to lose his sight like that. I don't know. I thought some of his late stuff was really interesting. It could have been so easily fixed nowadays. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Think about all the people who died of like syphilis. <laughs> right? Like that was like, that killed a lot of people. It didn't kill, I think it killed Degas. Uh, I think it killed Van Gogh's brother. A priest? No, he wasn't a priest. Wasn't it? Oh, he was an art dealer, yeah. He was an art dealer. Yeah. He yeah. died about 10 years after Vincent did, and he was very unwell. 
during the last years of Vincent's life, uh, he was starting to like lose his sight and he was like starting to struggle to move around. And I think he died of syphilis. I think he did. Yeah, does it look okay? This, well, maybe not. I can see some place needs to fix. Needs to fix it. Uh, looks, looks pretty good to me. Thank you. Okay, I'm yeah. gonna. I just start want to play it around. Cool. Now start playing around. You so, let's see. Pat, let's see. Ooh, uh, wait, sorry, I keep looking at pass. Um, pass, that looks pretty, that's coming along nicely. Um, this, no, this is, uh, this is looking good. Very good, excellent, excellent. Sorry, let me fix it here. I'll send you a picture of the forest painting that I uh, finished that I that I find so hard. I didn't think it did turn out well, but it was hard work. Yes. This is the forest painting I was talking about that was vexing me. I do think I, I think it's pretty good. I think I could do Let's it see. better if I did it again. I'll send it across. I like it, um, finally. But it was, it was way harder than the other ones that I've done, which are darker. Oh, I like that. Yeah, but it was, yes. I, it, I it took me like for, the sky. Thank you. It was so hard. <laughs> it was really hard. It was hard to get enough. And I think I would benefit from doing a similar subject where there's more light. Most of my ferns come from very dark faces. So they're, they're dark and heavier. They feel more like you're in the middle of the forest. You can't really see the sky. Oh, it looks um, like a fairy tale forest. I like it. Yes. That's what Northwest forests look like. This is what they look like here, fairy tale for us, with like the ferns hanging down and the, I'm sure there's places in California that look like that too. Uh, uh, is that in oil? Uh, acrylic. Acrylic, oh, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. um, lately I'm mostly painting in acrylic because I need to get done faster and these particular pieces are very expressive. So they, I can't, I want to be able to jump in and dive in and go over them. I want to be able to work more quickly. How did you do like the rain effect? <laughs> that was hard. I can't, I can't, can't, I cannot, I cannot tell you. I let a lot of drips come through on many, 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 many layers. Oh, wow. I let drips come through. Uh, if you look up close, you'll see they're just drips in the painting. Yes. Oh yeah, I think there's yeah. drips. I just let the drips. I did not erase the drips, and I kept layering more colors on top, and then letting drips fall. So it has a feeling of rain. Yeah, I'm liking them, and this is probably uh, the lightest one. The other ones look like the the sort of more classically successful ones look like this. Okay, I like did. Oh yeah, yep, yep. Mm hmm. So yep, that looks great, Diana. I would continue to pull it back on everything on the left side. I would pull even on that petal on the left. I would pull back the yellow, the orange just a little bit more, okay. and let that orange really define your dark. 
Okay. So you see what I'm saying? So let yeah. it be. That was, the, that was the idea, idea. right? Yeah. So let it, um, so kind of pull it. I would sort of consider the left side, the lighter side. And the, yeah. so and you, the you think of making it a lighter orange? Yeah, uh, yeah, or just like bringing in your petal color to cover it up a little bit more. Okay. Right, like a little bit more. So everything on kind of the left side, lighten that orange. Keep it there, but lighten it. And then the then the the oranges on the dark side really look like they're yeah. your they're sort of like a mid-tone shadow. Okay. Yeah, that's great, Diane. And now it looks interesting. Yeah, it was so boring. It was so yeah. boring. And you guys, I just showed you a sort of tradition, one of my ferns, a different fern, which is darker, has less light in it. It's more like in the shadow. They, those are easier for me because it's heavier. There's just more dark. There's less, I have to deal with less light coming through. So if you can see like, the difference yeah, the one between better. that one. Um, yeah, it's cut. You see, that's your, yeah. See, that's why my, my, my studio mate was like, you've got to make more. Even though I was like, phew, that was terrible. <laughs> no, it's, it's cool. I like it. Yeah, I think I have to do it too. I've, I I've really settled like myself. it, Leah. I, 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 I ended up, the first one, I ended up liking it, but it was hard work. The second one was easy, way easier. I could do it a lot faster. It's, um, um, uh, the second one is like just, easier it's just there's less light it's darker so i can like make light peeking through but i i can kind of keep the canvas darker and let the light sort of be a little bit more dramatic but this one the light really had to read it just i don't know you can hide less in the light darks are easier to hide things hide things i don't know how to that's not exactly what i mean but yeah i like it too but it was <laughs> it was hard uh, Jackie, good. This is good. I'm looking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It looks like an alien monster. Don't they look so weird? They really do, yeah. like with chompy teeth and <laughs> yeah. like all of that stuff. They totally do. <laughs> all right. Um, is everybody done with their drawings? Marianne, how's your tree coming along? Yeah, it has a kind of feed me Seymour kind of look to it. I was about to ask you if, um, if you thought I'm ready to put the ground on to kind of fix see. the drawing. Hold on. Let's see. Oh, yeah, Julia, that looks great. You guys are there. You're all there. It's beautiful. These are going to be amazing paintings. Yeah, put it down. Oh, Marianne. Yes, put the ground in. It's wonderful. Oh, it's magical. I love this tree. I can't wait to see it, how you're going to paint it. Look at this drawing, though, you guys. You know, it doesn't it, isn't it? Um, doesn't this have life already? And I feel that about everybody's drawings today. I feel like they already have a little bit of life. Even if they look, uh, like Jackie said, a little bit alien or monstrous, like I kind of, they have life, right? They have movement. They have a feeling of life. Uh, I think it is very good, uh, very good flower. Yeah, it was a good flower. Yes, because it's got so much going on. All right. I think that is, it's time to look at this. This one, not so much. You're, get, you're, uh, you're conquering it though. You're conquering it, Diana. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're conquering that son of a bitch. You're going to tame it and bring it into submission. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Sandra, she's going to nail that, that, that extended background technique because I think it's going to be, I think it's like, I think it's going to be something you're going to totally own. Um, all right. So who's working in oil today? Just Pat, right? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody else is working in acrylic. Okay. So um, I'm going to use a different material for, for the, so there, there's a point where the acrylic paintings and the oil paintings are going to diverge. 
Um, and that's when we start like kind of applying the top layers. Um, so Jackie, this question about why work in oil rather than acrylic, the sort of advantage of working in acrylic is that if you don't like what you've done, you can wait a few minutes, it dries, you can cover it up with something lighter or darker. Oil, there gets to this be this point, right, Pat, where like you just keep throwing paint on and it just stays. Oh, to look like, like mud. Yeah, because yeah. you because it doesn't dry. So whatever you throw into it will neutralize it. So just be aware there'll be a point where you might, we might diverge in our path. Um, what I'm gonna say is. Let's, I want you each to choose. We're going to actually, I should go, we should look at this for one more second. Um, for our underpainting, those of you working in, uh, for whatever, whatever medium you're working in, we're going to pick one color, light, medium, to, and do light, medium, and dark values on it, right? To paint it. And I want you to pick what that color is. Diana, what color should I paint this thing? What should the underpainting be? You know me. I mean, I I would what like would that do? one in orange. I was just thinking that. All right, so we're gonna do orange. So I'll show you what I mean. You can you can watch me because or, the purple will look really nice on top of that. I agree. I agree. But you don't have to do orange if you don't want to. You could do blue. You could do green. And your top colors can be whatever you want too. They don't have to be these purples, right? They don't have to be these purples. Okay. So here is my palette paper. I'm gonna mix a little bit of cadmium red, which is kind of an orangey red. This is oil with yellow. Where's my yellow? Where's my yellow? A little bit of cadmium yellow. I'm gonna mix them together. Um, because I'm using oil, for those of us using oil, we're gonna be using Gamsol, a little bit of Gamsol. Gamsol is, or turpentine. This is just Pat, I know you'll be using Gamsol like me. Gamsol or turpentine is a paint thinner. Uh, you don't wanna use it on your top layers, but what's nice about using it on your bottom layer, the first layer, is that it'll dry fast. So we can actually dry this painting in half, you know, 20 minutes. Um, I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna take a big brush, am I gonna take? I'm gonna take a big brush. I'm gonna challenge you to take the biggest brush you possibly can. This is a one inch craft brush and look at it. It's all scruffy and messy because we're gonna do a, a values underpainting to start out. Just like in pastels, right? You have a layers, you have layers. Um, so I'm getting my brush wet with turpentine. See Gamsol, can you see it dripping? I'm kind of removing most of the clumps of paint off my, off my, off my uh, brush. So it's mostly just this liquidy fluidy stuff that's making the brushes, the brush things, um, what do you call it? The, the bristles, it's making them wet with color, but it's not like piling on color. Piling on color would look like this. Right, where I can actually see clumps of paint. I don't want that. I want to have a very wet. So those of you who are working in acrylic will just do this with water and do the same thing with water. So I'm mixing, kind of want it a little darker. So I'm putting more red in to make it a little bit darker. And then I'm gonna go in and add in painting with my big thick brush the darkest parts of the petal. Is that the color you're going to paint it or is that the complementary color of the color you're going to paint? I'm painting now. Oh, okay. What am I doing? What does it look like I'm doing? I, you, I what don't. is it? Are you asking something different than I'm at, that I'm understanding? I, but it is complementary colors. Yes, it, it is complementary colors. But this is the color I'm, I mean, I'm painting now. I'm like adding my first layer right okay. now. Right. I'm adding my first layer. This is paint. Mm -hmm. This is the brush, right? This is a paintbrush. This is paint. This is my painting. That's color on there. I'm definitely adding my first layer of color. Will this be my second layer? No, just like pastel. No, mm -hmm. right? Pastel, I'm going to add a different colors on top. 
in a similar way to the way that pastel does it. Mm. I thought and I was done, but now I think I need to go in with yellow on the most left petal. Okay, yeah, 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 I agree. To sort of lighten up that orange a little yeah. bit to make it look like, yeah. but see, now you have the concept, right? Yeah. Like you yeah. knew what you needed to do. Yeah. Okay. So this is mostly the dark areas of the flower. Uh, Let me go and get clean water and tea. Up in here. It's kind of runny. Yeah. You can notice my kind of paint is kind of running in different, it's kind of like, um, runny in different direct, right? It's kind of running down. It's leaving. I'm going in and darkening a little bit more. So this is really the darkest part of my, of my flowers. So I'm very loosely adding in kind of a underpainting layer of orange. You do not have to pick orange. I would recommend you not. I'd recommend you try whatever color you love. And then, so I'm not gonna have you necessarily mix the colors that you see on the top. Um, well, I want you to pick a underpainting color, but you're gonna do it in one color. I mean, this is two colors, but I'm turning it into one color, right? I'm mixing it orange. You could do green. Oh yeah, Diana, yep, yep, yep. Little yellow on that edge and you are rock and rolling. Yep, heck yes. Yeah, you made it interesting. Thank you. Congratulations. In the Diana way. That's what I really like about it. The solution. Sandra, I don't expect you to paint like that woman who you got this idea from. Look, I've done this. Let's see. Hold on. I'm going to add you up there. This very pale blue. And it goes all over almost. Yeah, let's see what happens. And I'm, now, I'm curious. I'm curious. I like it. Right. I don't expect you to paint like her, but I expect you to take that technique and and take it into something that that you paints like you, in which you paint like you. Right. The idea is not to paint like her. The idea is to take the technique and be inspired by it. Yes. I'm really excited. I'm excited for you. Mm -hmm. I sense a new, you know, it reminds, you know, Sandra, the last time I was this excited by one of your pieces, it was um, when you did the seal in Wet on Wet. Uh, see, the seal was Wet on Wet, and I was just thinking that it's one of a few Wet on Wet pictures that I managed to work. Yeah, and it was one of your well. first, because you were like, because it was simple. There's something about the elegance it of it. lent himself to it. Yes, it, he lent himself to it, absolutely. So you can see mine is dripping. Uh, if you don't like the dripping, you can here. Hold on, wash it off with a little bit of uh, because that's because I'm uh, at an angle here. Hold on. So I think the question you were really getting at, Jackie, because I heard you ask it before is is this the final color of the painting and of course not right yeah of course every every painting that you see virtually every painting has a a different color under has at least one layer that you can't see yeah has more than one layer there's always an underpainting and whether it's in pastel whether it's in um or whether it's in paint there's always an underpainting. So this is my underpainting. So notice how sloppy it is. Notice how little detail I'm kind of really pushing. I'm really doing a light dark thing more than anything else. And you guys are, who are using it are using water. It's looking a little bit gray here. It looks less gray when I, I set the picture over, right? There's always an underpainting and you can, I really want, I really want to invite you to experiment with this.
What colors are you guys using? Out of curiosity. Pat, what color have you picked? I'm using the red and yellow. Okay, you're using the same one I'm using? That's cool. Mm -hmm. I'm using blue. Mm. That's going to be beautiful. I should send you um, the sort of uh, underpaintings that were done in Friday's class to, start, to give you. Th these guys were working in acrylic. So, but it was similar. Uh, I thought it was a really spectacularly successful group. And everybody, I'm just looking for them here. I'll send them over. Oh, nice, Marianne. Yeah, Pat. That's exactly right. I love it. It's perfect. Thank this you. Great. Love it. Love it. Let's take a break. Get yourself some tea while we let it dry. Um, let me show you some of the things that happened on. Oh, Julia, lovely. Uh, Marianne, I, look at how splashy. I love how that's splashing out that sort of tone at the base. Look at how she's kind of darkened towards the middle and then lightened towards the outside, which is where the light's coming from. Very subtle, but very good sort of understanding of movement. Yeah, you guys. Unintentional. Love it. Yeah, it's intentional. You just, you're just so uh, used to doing it. You don't even know that you're doing it. Mm. Yeah. Here, I'm gonna show you a couple of the underpaintings that came from uh, Friday's class because, so here was Onyx. This was a black and white. Um, here was I'll go back to the beginning. I'll take her out. Here was Annika's. I'm almost done actually. Right. Here was. So look at the different uh, colors of these underpaintings. I want you to see them. I'll show you the end results. Linda did hers as blue. Yep. So these guys all did different colors. So Jackie, the only, yeah. So now you're gonna do a slightly more watered down version. Pat kind of already did it. So um, with more water. I'm taking more yellow. I'm just doing the lighter. Oh I'm yeah. Doing it slightly, the lighter edge. And you want to get the outside. Right? So this is not meant to be like super detailed. It's kind of more meant to direct us in. Leah, I'm gonna um step out while this dries and stuff so thanks okay I'll are you coming it. back um what time is it well we'll be here for another uh hour and a half oh okay cool yeah All so right, if you thanks. feel like it come back in great nice to see thanks. you my love you too take care bye Right, so we have a kind of light dark. If you want to, you can go back in and kind of darken. I'm kind of going back in and darkening a little bit more in my darkest areas. Here, down here, here. Right, just to let that pop a little bit more. But really, we're just kind of trying to get, because look at how flat, it's nice, right? They're already starting because the drawing is good and because we've got a little color on. Oh, what's happening out there? Hello, Kitty. Here, hold on. Here's a little. Who is that? I can't see. It's it's small. There's Dragon. It's Hello. Look at gorgeous eyes. Hello. Dragon. And here we have the cherry in full bloom. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. Mm. Beautiful. There I go. Um, wonderful work, you guys. Really, really neat. Everybody's doing great so far. So take a minute to let your, once you've got paint, so notice how kind of thin this first layer looks. Notice how transparent it looks. Notice how much less, um, 
I'm darkening this just a little bit. Notice how uh, how we can see kind of to the ba the base of the paper, right? The base of the, the canvas. It's not. We can't get that vibrancy of paint on our first layer. Our first layer of color is what supports the kind of vibrancy on the next layers. And it's interesting because we cover it up and yet still, if we, our first layer always looks flat. So you kind of need a first layer before you can get to uh, the top layers. Oh my God, Sandra, did you see the um, uh, cat video I posted on Facebook? Oh no, I did. Oh, um, on the treadmill? <laughs> yes. In fact, that was a funny video. video. I, I, was always, I was always afraid. I love the way they shut each other out of the way. Oh my God, it was so funny. And how like, I was like, I wish I could just get Hermes on one of these. So, but you know that yeah. um, they make, uh, as I, I actually answered to your video because they make uh, cat wheels like they, hamster oh, wheels. Right, for the bangles. And they're, they're very popular amongst bangles. Oh. Do, you think, do you think Julia would like one? Look at I it. don't know. I'm always afraid of accidents. So some of them are better than others. I'm always. Oh. This know. one is just this one is just tromping away. There's <laughs> two. Now the third one is like knocking the second one off. <laughs> it's like, who's alpha here? No more. I couldn't stop laughing. I just thought it was the funniest thing. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> I can't see Hermes. Hermes won't do anything if he's not interacting with you. He's like, he, he is so just on playing. It's, it spends their energy, basically, the reason yeah. why Bengal, because otherwise we get into mischief. High energy cuts. Maybe it works for Sunny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sunny needs one. <laughs> you need a massive one. <laughs> totally. Yeah, let this dry for a minute. So um, for Pat, for you and I using oil, this is going to be a little bit uh, sketchy. So yeah, get really get up. Those of you who are working in, um, uh, in acrylic, can, you'll probably dry a lot faster. And give me just a second. I'll be right back. Yay. I think I'm done. I'm not spending more time on this.
All right, how's everybody doing? I thought I was done and then I started to touch it and I screwed it up. <laughs> I hate it when that happens. Ooh, Julia, beautiful. Look at how that's already starting to have a little vibration. Oh, she's not there. But anyway, lovely. Pat, just like Pat's. I'm I not like going to deal with this more. I'm going to give it. Yeah, yeah. I'd put it, it away because it'll make you insane. Yeah. But at least it's better than it was. I think it's actually kind of ingenious problem solving. Thank you. Yeah. Now. If you want to, on your top layers, you can put these colors, these colors. But if you want to, you can put any colors you want. I was kind of thinking. Oh, this is where I ended up. Let's see, hold it up. Oh, send it over. I can hold it up. Hold it up. Hold on. Oh yeah, you've done a lot to that, to make that. Yep, yep. And you know what actually the genius thing was? Dark top, light bottom background. I'm gonna try that on mine. I think that's also really key. In yeah, showing I movement. In yeah, showing I tell. movement. Yeah. Okay. Um, so on your top layers. So if you are going to mix these colors, I, I just haven't decided what I want to do with my top layers. Hold on, I'm going to get another palette paper. I'm going to get another sheet. They really could be anything. If I wanted to be kind of experimental, I might try like greens and blues and maybe a pink. Maybe that will. I mean, if I don't like it, right, I can always change it. I can always, um, if I don't like what I'm, if I don't like what the painting looks like, I can wait till it dries and paint over it. Paintings are never hurt by layers. Let's see. Mm, lovely. Pat, I like how you push the darks there. Gorgeous. Aren't Thanks. these nice looking already? I, I'd love to see yours, Jackie. And I and take a look at these others, right? That I set through the thread. These are these are Fridays. This one's a black and white. This one was a kind of oranges and yellows. This one was blue. Ooh, Jackie, nice. You can go a little bit darker. Uh, I love how this flower is looking and this one. If you want to, you can go a little bit darker here. I'll do the same actually. Uh -huh. A tad bit darker here, oh, yeah. just to distinguish the right. petal from the background. But other, with, other than that, that looks pretty good. These are looking good. So what's nice about the underpainting is it doesn't have to be perfect. We don't have to be fussy. We can fix things on the top layers, which I find really relieving, right? So when I'm problem solving, I'm not having to like, problem solve everything. <laughs> um, so if you're wanting to mix this purple, um, I'm going to suggest, let's try a couple of things. You make purple by mixing what colors? Red and blue. Red and blue, right? But not all reds and blues are created equal. So I'm putting a little quinacridone, um, sorry, I'm putting a little ultramarine blue there. And now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna suggest you either try 
bottle of orange crimson, which is kind of a dark burgundy color, or um, a little quinacridone. Hold on. I didn't get the first red you mentioned. So Alizar and this is Alizar and Crimson. It's kind of like a, a almost a burgundy color. I'll take a picture of these so you can see these. And then this is quinacridone red. You'll also want a little bit of white on your on your palette, and a little bit of yellow any yellow. Yes, I do. Okay, I've got a palette knife for my oils. And you can try uh, mixing here, hold on. I'll take a picture of these so you can see them, the differences between them. So this is ultramarine blue and the two reds. Here it is. Kind of yellow and white. You can try a little bit of blue and then bring down a little bit of um, alizar and crimson. And then if you wanna see how it lightens, get a little bit of white in, see how it kind of, what kind of purple this will turn out to be. So you see, this is kind of, oops, nope, you can't see it. So you can see this uh, alizar and makes a kind of nice, reddish purple, particularly if you add more alizarin, it kind of makes a pretty, although I don't know, not exactly, not exactly the purple. Let's see. Well, now here's a question. I wonder if I mix both reds in. Aha! That's the solution. So if you have them, if you mix both alizar blue, alizarin, crimson, and quinacridone red, you're going to get this pretty reddish color, reddish purple color. Uh, you can't really see it because it looks bluer than it actually is here. Let me take a picture of this. This has quite a bit of red mixed into it. Yes. Hold it. Ah, I can't hold my palette knife and hold my palette and hold my phone. See this? That makes kind of a pretty, purpley color. If you want it to be darker, you can use more blue and less white. If you don't have those colors, let me know what you have and we'll talk about what might be good mixes for them. Um, what I can see as I come up here is that this is kind of more um, orangey and this is more purpley pinky. You can see these kind of yellow stripes. Jeez. There we go. So, I'm going to go in and paint with a smaller brush now. 
Not that much smaller though, but I have, this is a smaller, so it's less ragged anyway. Yeah, it's smaller. You can go even smaller than this if you want to, not too much smaller. And now I'm using only paint and a little bit of, uh, ladies, those of you using, um, those of you using uh, uh, um, acrylic will use, you can use a little bit of water. Right, Pat, you and I can use just more strictly paint. Right. At this point, it kind of makes more sense to use paint. Also, observe, if I'm working in oil and I lay down a color that's too dark, like I just did here, I can pretty easily just go in right with white on top and mix it. See how I'm doing that? to lighten it a little bit. And then this can be a little darker. So I'm kind of going back in and filling in my darks. But if I want to, I could use a totally different color. So Jackie, you might decide to make this all oranges and yellows, right? Or you could put purples on top of your blues, whatever you want to do. You can do anything. Okay. Um, at this point, Pat, the only thing you'll want to use your Gamsol for is to clean your brush right in between and right. then you'll squeeze it out. So it's really yeah. mostly paint we're going for. Yeah, up here, my palette and everything. Right? Uh, up here, I'm mixing a little bit of yellow and Pernacrida red. I'm putting that in up here. I know it's darker, but I'm gonna lay my lighter colors in on top later. <laughs> Which might be, I might have just shot myself in the foot for doing any more work on this until next week. Um, in next week's class, by the way, we have several flowers we haven't finished in oil. So next week's class is just going to be a bring your own painting and work on it. And I will help you with whichever ones you want to work on. I don't know. Which ones have you done, Pat? I've done the, the daisy and the sunflower and the lily and the right? lily right yeah. so we could work on you could bring those all and we can i'll just help i'll work with people individually uh, if we don't finish today you can bring this back um i don't have a see. quartet of flowers yeah so nice right um i'm going a little bit darker on the underneath colors even though i know ultimately these will be lighter on top Darks look really nice. And this is kind of an orangey color, which I'm putting in here. And I'm kind of putting where the greens are. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. I'm kind of darkening my orange. So here, there's kind of areas that are sort of, yellowy, orangey, kind of like here. Yeah. Here a little bit. Definitely more yellowy here. So all the kind of yellowy or green, but not purple parts, I'm doing an orange. But a thicker orange. Oh, was that sunny? Right, one where you can see more actual paint on the brush, not just drippy. Nothing's dripping. Right, this is just solid paint on the brush. It's kind of pretty cool.
it looks dark, right? But we're going to add our light layers on on top. Then I'm going to clean my brush with turpentine. The rest of y'all can clean your brushes with water. Squeezing it out here. And then I'm going to go in with kind of a more bluey purple. So that means more, I'm going to mix more blue and red. It's going to be a little bit darker. That's interesting. There's more blue here. I know there's white here, but we need to get this dark, this area dark first, and then we'll lay the lights on top. And then I can use this kind of lighter purple. Here. And I'm doing a little thing called blending, which is where, see how there's this dark shadow and this light bit and all in the petal, same petal. You want what's called a soft edge. So you want there to be a dark and a light area, but you want the light to kind of blend over. Instead of being a strong, hard line like this, you want the white to kind of blend over into the dark. So I actually brush a pile of light, lighter paint into the darker like this. So this is a hard edge where this light dark meets this dark edge, right? There's no blending. This is just a hard edge, light here, dark here. But here, the light blends in more subtly. It's there. But the edge isn't so hard. It kind of comes in on top like this. You can usually only do about, it helps for both sides to be wet. And here's where oil painters kind of have an advantage. This stuff is not drying. So I can go back in, right? And wet it easily. You acrylic painters are gonna need to keep re-wetting both sides, the dark and the light for this to really work. For your purple on the left there, did you use alizarin red there? I used both, alizarin and quinacridone. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it gave this kind of nice, kind of orange. Very nice. Right? Yeah. Like it gave this kind of nice orangey, pinky. Yeah. Yep. I thought it would be alizarin and ultramarine blue, but that turned out a little bit too blue. Yeah. The, yeah. The, I, so, that. I had that, so. There's a fantastic color called quinacridone magenta, if you have it, which I think would also do, which if you mix that with blue. See, I'm kind of losing my pink on this side, and I might not be able to get it back in this session. Yep. I don't have quite the... Hence the disadvantage of oil. See, at this point, and there's only so much kind of pushing I can do. I have to wait till it dries, which will take days. <laughs> I can take a little bit of this kind of purpley ready color and pop it in here too. Take 
How's it going, everybody? Interesting. Interesting. That's a good word. Interesting. <laughs> The, there's a, there's a, a painting book I like. Well, I don't really like the book itself. It drives me crazy. I'm like, why can't the painting book be like this? But the one thing that they do really well is they describe this um, point, the painting as or in drawings as being awkward in the awkward stage. And they look awkward before they look good, right? Certainly do. <laughs> they certainly, right? <laughs> So they try to tell you to embrace the awkward. <laughs> it's like the awkward is where you have to go. You have to block in all the color before you can really get anything. So yeah, mine, I'd say mine's looking pretty awkward right now. Get that off of there. Sandra, I daren't even ask how it's going because I know you're in, I can see you're in a flow. So well, just know no. that I'm curious. I've messed it up a bit, but I can maybe still fix it. I'll hold show it you. up. Or yeah, or take a picture or something. Hold on, I'll, yeah. I'll hold it up. Oh wait, I don't want to go in gallery. <gasps> Sandra, Ooh. it's beautiful. No, it's You not haven't really messed good. it up. You no, have not. This one. Uh -uh. You have keep, not messed it up. It. The uh, bird is okay, but it's not so okay. But I can kind of fix it. I think it's, oh my God. No, it's coming along. It's You're really hard nice. on yourself, Sandra. Yeah. Well, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Actually, Sandra used to be a lot harder on herself. She's way better now. You're way easier on yourself now. And you know why? Because she's gotten better. Like she's oh, gotten well, yes. so much better that like, it's like, it's easy, right? So those first, um, I think you're really starting to get, see the continuation of the process. Yeah, I was just thinking, you know, the difference between us and my brother. And for us, it's a bit like, we're scientists experimenting and saying, oh, this is great and that. And he's like the uh, end user. You know, it's like, no, this. <laughs> is it, which, when there's which no, is, when this is not the end, right? It's not the end. Well, but it is. I mean, um, say if you were to sell paintings, would somebody buy this or not? I think. Yeah, but that's um, not, but that's not what this is. This is a process. But it is it's, if I post it on Facebook, it's, you know. Right. Unless you say, this is an okay. experiment. Yeah. Yes, I suppose. And I suppose it's, for me, it's valid, his point of view, because it's um, somebody who who's, doesn't paint. What does it look like to them? Does it look like, a, as you said, like a grandmother's painting or does it look like totally amateurish or is it something you would buy or 
Yeah, but you know, you also looking at art takes training. It's it's not like you, you know, people say, yeah, you know what you like, but you know, the more you look at art, your senses develop too. Nobody and when you do art, when you when you do art, art. But even more so when you but do. But at the end of the day, you know, people like something or not. I mean, uh, and I know that uh, most people don't have training. I know my brother's got a certain eye because he does collect uh, uh, yeah. art. So um, to me, it's kind of valid a little bit. It's not. Uh, it's diff I mean, we are much easier on ourselves here. Yeah. Well, you know your brother too better than we do, so that may be right. his way of contributing to you. Right. That's a good way of looking at it. Or not. <laughs> it gives me this, it bounces it off for me. It's like most of my friends of faith books are not painters, and therefore we're going to look at it like is this something I put on my wall or not? Is this something I buy or not? So it gives me that point of view which I think is interesting because that's not the point of view I'm getting here, obviously. I, um, is I think we're a bit easier on ourselves. But I carefully curate what I put on Facebook. I can put very beginnings. I, I sometimes will put a work in process, but I don't put my experiments up. Right, exactly. So I'm finding the opposite with people that aren't artists. They think my little tries are so wonderful. Yeah, <laughs> that's because true, they, Pat. They feel like I couldn't do that. So I don't know. Yeah, it's true in a way. And I guess it depends. Um, I know that you do get a little jaded in, when you're uh, wandering around in Portland Open Studios because you see so much good art and then you know you compare what you do to that. It's, oh my god, Pat, wait till you see this year's lineup. We just picked them. It's it incredible. It's, well, yeah, it's, when you got it's, it's incredible. From. It's incredible. We got 120. 120, that's the most. We took 120 out of 160. Hmm. And it was really, there. it is a really, this is one of the most generous, wide ranging thinking juries I think we've ever had. It is a very uh, a surrealist things that were really valued. Do um, you know who got top scores? Maud May. Oh, she said she was second from the top. I mean, she got like, I, I don't know if she got exactly what the top person got, but I think they got the same score. I just think Maud yeah. was second in is second alphabetically. I think she got the top score. Um, you know, along with Diane Russell and uh, Kamala Dolphin Kings, you know, people who we know have like really intense skill, but also a slightly surrealistic bent. So it's a very narrative, kind of folky, sort of, it's really delightful. <laughs> it's going to be a great year. <laughs> I say that every year, but Not it really has come is. pretty far with her, her fabric. She, I feel it's very consistent now. It's not so like everything's all over the place. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's really, it's very strong. The judges loved it. Yeah, you guys, if you want to like talk about um, <laughs> a really vulnerable experience, like <laughs> we have to, this art event that Pat and I uh, do, um, we have to, uh, uh, you have to, as an artist, you have to submit four pieces of art and an artist statement and be judged basically blindly on that. 
So you have four different judges evaluating you. It's on several different categories. It's like, whoo, I did okay this year. Did you? Mm -hmm. Is there some years when you don't do okay? Yeah, there's some years people are like, well, there was one year a jury just decided, I hate all cityscapes. They're so boring. And she tanked everybody. <laughs> cityscape, like just gave them zeros. It, it was actually terrible. We, it was so bad. She tanked like ter lots of people. I wasn't the only one who went down. Anybody who did a cityscape or a landscape went it's down. It's like John Cusack on Runaway Jury. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's when we changed our jury process because we let them just score people, gave them a number, and we said, please do consider whether you like it or not, whether they did it well, blah, blah, blah. But they got to pick whatever number she uses, like zeros. <laughs> Was it zero to what? Seven. Seven? Uh huh. Yeah, I've only submitted work to one, you know, like a, one of those salon things mm -hmm. at an art museum. It's brutal. It's yeah, like well, really brutal. Yeah, I I was accepted though. Um, you were what? I was Nothing. accepted though. Mm -hmm. And I sold my paintings. <laughs> so that was fun. But that's the only time I've done it. Is that recently? No, it's like it's like 30 years ago. Okay, when you were a kid. All right. All right. Um boy, Sandra, I as I'm thinking about that, I'm kind of getting what you're saying as you send stuff to your brother. I kind of get what you're doing. It's brutal, but it is helpful. But it's most people out there. Yeah. It's most people out here. Mm -hmm. I mean, because what we do here, we understand the process a lot more. You can see, you, you judge us I can against, see. against. I can see where you're going. Yeah. Exactly. You judge me against where I am now. So you judge me against my progress, not against, um, you know, not completely objectively. Do you see what I mean? As if yeah, you were like nailing it, right? Because I can see, right, right. So mm -hmm. that's the difference. Whereas, mm -hmm. um, and this is, as I say, I mean, uh, this is not a complete stranger. This is somebody you know who loves me. So right, still, right. So you still being be like not a total asshole, right? <laughs> right. But, but uh, I have to. Is he your only brother, Sandra? Yes, I've got a sister as well. She's 10 years younger, but we didn't grow up together. Right. So whereas I grew up with my brother and we we're really very close. Right. Um, he's my big brother. Aww. So now I'm just doing more, I'm adding a bit more white into my purple mixtures to get the sort of lights on top. And I'm adding a little bit more blue. So it's kind of still purplish, but slightly more blue tinted. And I'm brushing in, you can see I'm kind of brushing in here. Actually, this is super light. So let me see if I can lighten it enough. I'm brushing in white over it. I'm still kind of working the darker areas. So these are what we would call in painting terms, the, um, the mid-tones. They're kind of halfway between light and dark, right? This is a light. This is a dark. But these other things in here are mid-tones. Trying to like get it so you can see. So I'm trying, so this has to be darker, but not as dark as what's happening down here. This is even darker. 
You make things darker by adding more of the darker color. So now I'm looking a little bit more closely at color vary of at value variations. Like right in here, it's darker. Here it's kind of medium. Here it's actually a little bit more light. Now I've already laid down this dark color. If you're working in acrylic, you could just wait a minute and then lay a lighter version. Uh, I'm gonna have to work with, I'm gonna have to deal with the fact that my bottom color is still wet. So I have to use quite a lot of white to lighten it enough. Can you see how much I'm just kind of loading on here? Um, I suppose. I might even have to clean my brush off. Take a little turpentine. You can also do this with water. And see, I'm trying, I'm kind of struggling to get my lighter values to come out. I don't know, Pat, how you're doing in this. I'm trying, I'm aiming for a, a more of a blue or lavender then. Yeah, it, look, it do it. it. Blue. And yeah, it is blue. It comes do it. blue. Do it. Yes, do it. Do that. So you're you're still trying to get the color that you want that you think yeah. you're seeing. Not just the color that you want, the color that you think is there. Excellent. I'm a little bit in this case less fussed with the color that I think is there, although I'm working closely with it and more with value. Both of those things are totally okay. You can see I'm kind of layering in this light. See, there's a little bit of light here. So you're putting your like mid-tone down and then lighten it on the canvas. Yeah, I thought it was lighter <laughs> until I put it on the canvas and then I went, oh shit, that's oh, okay. not light enough. I, I was just, you know, thinking it would read as lighter. I'm finding all my mid-tones I had to lighten mostly. And you'll observe that these are kind of softer edges. In fact, I'm not even going to put any darker areas in until I get my my lighter my lightest areas in because now I'm worried everything's going to be too dark. You may try, Pat, um, different blue other than ultramarine. You might try thallo to see if that does, you know what I mean? Like, oh, okay. you, like you can try different blue. Ultramarine might be a little bit too red hmm. to give you the blue tone that you like. So maybe try thallo blue, maybe try Prussian blue, right? There's other blues that you can try that might be more like kind of the blue that you want. I will try. So you guys can see here, I'm really just kind of trying to lay out the major light, medium, and dark shapes in paint. I'm having some success and some not success. I'm getting a little bit more detailed. I'm getting into the inner lines a little bit more. 
kind of dim. There's a little light area in here. And if so, if you're not happy with your blue or your purple, you can switch up one of the elements. Switch up the um, switch up your blue to something more cool. Or don't do blue at all. Make this a yellow and a pink like iris. I mean, you can really make it any color you want as long as your values match. Where are we at? Yeah, we've got about half an hour left. So. No, I'm finding this one hard. Yeah. yeah, it's hard. There's a lot of structure to it. There's a lot of things going on. Uh, Diana was finding it nice, right? But it is challenging one. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not doing the second one. I'm done with irises for a while. <laughs> so what are you doing now? Yeah, I, yeah. I almost did pansies. I'm today. doing a. I'm doing a commission that I haven't really decided if I'm taking, but I'm just- You're practicing it. I'm trying it out. So I'm just sketching it out. So this is where I'm at. It's, it's oh, hold three on. people. Oof. Hold on, hold on. So I'm just, I'm just in the middle. I'm just starting to sketch out. Oh, it's already it's, looking. It's good. It it's like got legs. Right now. It's With got this, legs. This it's yeah. got legs. I like it. The block in is looking really good. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Block in is looking good. And then the next thing is I don't know what to charge it for. It. I charge by the face. I charge two hundred dollars yes. a face. Yeah. You have to charge more when it's. I yeah. charge for I, I charge. I'm working on a on a commission right now as well. I charge two hundred a face, with two faces. I'm like, and then other stuff, right? Depending on how complex the background. Depending is. on what it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's cheap, I think. Yeah. And this guy can afford it, so. Oh yeah, fuck it. Charge him three hundred dollars a face. No, 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 I won't do that. I'm surprised that he wanted people. He's otherwise, um, he's a, he, he is a horse jockey, racing, racing trainer. Who are the people? It's him, his son, and his brother. Oh, okay, just family. Yeah. It's different, and it's family. His, his brother has a stable in Florida. Um, we, but we went to school together. Ah. The Swedes take over the world. Yeah. Not exactly. <laughs> I am like completely absorbed by the Van Hetteren mystery series. Who is the writer? Um, the what? The Van Hetteren, Van Veteran mystery series. Um, like it's like, it's always like the detective and the silent mind. The I have detective. no idea. He's Swedish. If they're really good. I, I got here. I just have the wrong nose. Swedish detective. I have no detective. idea. You knew him. I, I I mentioned him before and you knew him. I'm just not getting the details right here. Hold on. The television or a book? Uh, books. 
So good. Steve Clausen? Nope. No. Um, Mm -hmm. It's um oh. Oh. I hate that. Um uh, Nesser. Oh, well, I miss it. Oh, Jesus okay. Christ, what a great writer he is. Like, he is a fantastic writer. He is a fantastic writer. I read The Mind's Eye, and at the end of that one, it's like the best like ending to a... It's very dark, but super spot on. Yeah, Van Hetteren. Isn't that the name of his? I, I don't know. It's yeah. such a long time since I read any of his Oh, books. my God, is he a wonderful writer. Wonder. But it, he is, a, I have a couple of it. I have a few of his books. And he is. In Swedish, of course. Yeah. Oh, I can imagine in Swedish, they're even better. I've actually met him a couple of times. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, he was, he was here for, this was while I still was working as a journalist. He was here to, for the launch of, some of his books probably in english or in yeah. some like other right yeah. Yeah. yeah nice guy yeah super nice i would imagine because he's like it, super successful and his he gets all this dark out like in yeah. those books. I, if i don't re remember uh wrongly he's from northern sweden yeah. yeah all of his books are set in these yep sort of northern swedish towns yeah. Um, he's really, yeah, he just is a fantastic writer. I mean, not all detective, you know, fiction is, but his is like, woo. By the way, I added the little Viridian green and yellow. See if I could get in a little bit of green. And on top of my stems. And a touch in here. Where else is it? A little bit up in here. Yeah, maybe a little here. But the real point of the green, of course, is that it'll be a good background color. You don't have to do what's happening in the background. And if you're going to mix green, you want to put just a touch of red in it. It can be any red. You can lighten it with yellow. Do you want just a little bit of red in your green? Leo, I finished my thing. I'm not that happy with it, but uh, and also um, hold it up. Hold on, just a second. Can we see? What are you talking about? It's, it's so wonderful. Delicate. It's so nice. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah nice. it's like I no... also added leaves to this one. Okay. Because I thought it yeah, that's needed nice. some leaves. Sandra. So beautiful. Sandra, I want to make a point here. I am not a blow smoke up your ass kind of person. You know that. I'll second that. I will tell you, I will tell you <laughs> if I don't think it's working. I will tell you if I don't think it's working. If I like it, then it's I'm I'm telling you an honest truth. That's really good. There, you're getting somewhere. And uh, you can decide it's not the end point. You can decide it's not where you are, but that's actually really good. Right? And Diana, I'm not wrong on this. You listen to Diana. You don't really, you don't, you're like, you, you, can, you can say, ah, Leah is just trying to be nice, blah, 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 blah. But like, although but Diana is also awesome. nice. <laughs> yeah. Really? We've all been categorized into nice. Um, I, I, I really am not like nice, nice, you know, I'm going to talk to you uh, about like where I think you need improvement. I think this is an incredible direction for you and I think you need to keep going. So I think it's, um, 
it's a difficult subject. To, to... It is, but like, why? But it almost looks traction. like an iris. You're getting, I think it's beautiful. I don't know. I think you're getting traction. I'm going to switch to pansies, but okay. they have many leaves. Um, they don't, not, not petals. They only have a few petals. No, they have a few petals, but a lot of green leaves around, you know? Yeah, but you don't have to paint all those green leaves. Remember, the subject is where you're, you're putting all your energy. So you can see here, I'm now at this point putting in background color. Um, I'm trying green. I'm not sure I'm really in love with the green. I might change it to turquoise. We'll see. Um, now I start to run into this dilemma as an oil painter that I can't, I can fix it, but I still have to wait till it dries before I fix it. So I'm looking for a minute to see. You might want to try blue or maybe even pink or maybe even yellow. Oh yeah, that's what I want to try. Screw this green stuff. Let's see what happens if I just use yellow. All right, I'm gonna try and see how, so this is an experiment for me. I'm seeing if I like the yellow kind of better as a background color on the top. I might not, but I know that if I don't like it, I can always just wait till it dries. And Pat, if you get to a point where like, you just can't work anymore, you know, you've gotten paint everywhere mm -hmm. uh, and you can't go any, you know, you can't seem to like lighten or darken it. You're, I mean, I guess we've only got about 25 minutes left, but if you get to that point, you're welcome to bring out one of your other paintings uh, that's dry and we can work on it a little bit. So here's yellow. I kind of like the yellow better. So I may stick with yellow as my background. Let's oh, that see. looks very, that's a very nice background. Right, and right, why, why Diana? Because it's like complimenting the Because flowers, it's right? really complimenting the flower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was it's feeling this was just looking a little too dingy. Yeah. Um, I like it being a slightly different color, but I'm going to see if I can get. Yeah, I was toying with the idea of yellow background, but but it didn't work for my flower. Um, I think you made your flower kind of work. We might work on it just a little bit more. And this is another page I took from Diana's book. I made the bottom a little bit darker and the top a little bit lighter. And I think that helps kind of create a sense of background without like getting too defined. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is not, I may not be able to go much farther than this. I could maybe try to do it, add a couple of white bits. Those of you who are working in acrylic, of course, you can, um, uh, you can, yours is going to dry quickly. So you can just keep, wait a couple minutes and then go back in if you want to add like light layers. Uh, let's see what happens if I try to add a little bit of white in here. Let's see. Can I do it? I don't think I can. But let's just see. Get myself some white. Also have kind of. <laughs> it's been so long since I've used my oil paints. A couple months. You need some? What? Um, I don't. <laughs> I wish I thought I would, but I really don't. Uh, I'm appreciating working in acrylic right now. Um, although I'm kind of liking the the density of the color, if that makes any sense, yeah. right, right here, I'm kind of appreciating that a little bit. All right, uh, I'm going to try a couple of uh, experimental techniques to try and get some of these little zebra stripes, as Santa calls them. And give me <laughs> just a second; I'll be right back. I'm going to get some tools.
So, I think you guys remember that I told you you can sometimes you can really paint with anything. So this is like the edge of a cardboard box. You notice I just ripped a, a corner off of a cardboard box. So I'm going to here. You can see it. I'm going to dab my. I'm going to kind of load up this cardboard box with some white paint, and then I'm going to try and dab it in a couple places. I don't know if this is going to work. Um, uh, and particularly right. with my oil, right? Because everything's going to kind of blend. Oh, no, it's not the worst. I'll probably have to go over with more. Yeah, but it's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, it's kind of a neat way. You can sometimes use like leaves. It'll apply, right? Kind of unevenly. Yeah, that I like that because. Right, because of the because of just of the sort of oblongy yeah. nature, and it's particularly good. We did it in acrylic. You can totally do this in acrylic. I like to do this in oil because, as Pat will tell you, like if I tried to brush on this light, I wouldn't be able to do it. If I can kind of tap it on and leave it there, yeah, well, that's a little too much, right? But you see the pull off a little bit if I think. Oh, now it's actually the value it needs to be down here. Yeah, you totally can also works. paint with your finger, right? So you can do things. Now let me try it with the yellow, right? Because there's this sort of fuzzy yellow sort of caterpillar thing that's sticking out of the... Oh, actually, I've got more yellow here. So let me try it on the other side. I'll try with the yellow over here. So now I've got yellow. Let's see what happens when I do this. Uh, it works a little bit. I need yellow and white. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. So it gets a little bit of this fuzzy texture. I don't think I'm going to, like I said, I don't think I'm going to be able to finish it. And I have to load a lot of stuff on it. I can't, it doesn't seem to work. If I have to pr press in, right, uh, it doesn't work as well. Um, also, observe I didn't really do every, you know, white line. I didn't do everything. I just did a few. And notice how much that, like, how little one needs to do. I'm kind of coming down here. It works though. It does. It creates yeah. this kind of nice um, texture when you're trying to do fuzzy things. So that's something you can try. Notice I just don't need to do that much. There's a little bit down here. Right. So sometimes this is a nice alternative to the brush. I also very often find myself using my finger. See how I'm like trying to, this is why I have paint on everything. And my boyfriend despairs of me because he's kind of a natty dresser. And I'm just terrible. <laughs> like, oh my God. I just got paint on my nicest skirt because I was being an idiot. Um, so see how nicely, ugh, I don't know if I like that that so much. So see, I'm kind of blending it back. I'll go in with a brush later and maybe adjust these colors. But there's only so much I can do. But you can try a box. Maybe there's something else in your um, sort of area that you could dip something into. Like, I don't know, like, like a drink container, right? I don't know what that will do. It's probably a little bit more controlled. Let's see. Oh, yeah. It also does some things. So 
anything that you can kind of blend paint on. We'll continue to work on these next week in our last week of class before the quarter ends. Um, I'm going to do pansies, by the way, Sandra, in all the other classes. So oh, good. we'll have a few. We'll have a few next week. We end. Yeah. Oh, great. For our last, for our last I'll, week. And I'll send so, you some photos as well. Please do. Uh, and our last um, class for the quarter, quote unquote, will be um, next Sunday. So there'll be a Sunday class. Marie will have her last class. Um, and then we're going to take a week off. Um, oh. I'm going to New York. <laughs> so exciting. Oh, fun for you. Yeah. I'm having my first like full week vacation in like, I don't even know, where there's no teaching and I'm not having to paint. And I'm going to visit Janet and Jessica and all those people uh, in New York City to say hello and get some mag, you know. Uh, get some like drawing, figure drawing in and a little plein air painting and, but just really, you know, have an enjoy, like not have to produce anything. Nice. Um, oh, I hear the crew. Yeah. That? Yes, he's here. He's here. He's here. Absolutely. Um, and then uh, we'll be back in class the first week of April. And remember that Emma is starting her Procreate class. Uh, she's going to actually start that class on April 10th now. Okay. Um, I'm Yeah, uh, uh, it, yeah, not April 3rd, because April 3rd is still the kind of between the quarters. Uh, I'll send a note out to everybody with the change and the reminder of when things are starting. So there'll be a free, pro, well, not free, but, you know, a Procreate class. Uh, on Sundays during Marie's, uh, during three of the uh, four weeks of May, uh, sorry, April. So is it going to be the, the 10th, the 17th, and 24th, or is she It'll skipping the It'll be the 10th, weeks? the 24th, and actually May 1st. Okay. Because she's busy on the, on the, on the 24th. So the, t sorry, she's busy on the 17th. So it'll be the 10th, right. the 24th, and May 1st. Um, and I just was reviewing with her today. Um, I was just reviewing with her like that class and how to make it work. It's going to be really great. You guys are going to love it. Maybe so we I could add another one. We have to download. The... I've asked her to do that. Huh? What so did you say? To... So we have to down download Procreate, right? I think Procreate is just, yes, if on your iPad. Yeah, if you don't have it, you've got it's to download it. Oh, you okay. Have to pay for yeah. it, actually. I think you have to buy it. Do you have to buy it? I think so. I bought it. I think I bought it. It was a I couple of years know. ago. I don't know. Oh, this is where we go out of well. my realm, and I'm like, I have no idea. Because Leah, did you say you asked her to do an animal? I did. Oh, thank you, thank you. Did she yeah. say yes? I think so. I'll uh, double check it with her. But uh, we were talking about a bunch of things today. We were trying to you know, figure out sort of how you could see her screen and all of that stuff. And I asked her then, but I'll, um, oh. I'll double check that. Uh, um, yeah, so, uh, so that class will be in, in April. And then I think we're going to be doing printmaking in May. So, and then on and on. I, I've hired a caricature artist to teach a three session well, caricature what about watercolor? class. I haven't managed to get Surin pinned down yet. So if he won't do it, I'll just ask somebody else. But so I see Leah, yeah, yeah, if you have to buy it, but it's like ten dollars, nine ninety nine. Oh, nine ninety nine just for to get yeah. procreate. Okay. Or for the for a month or for oh mm. you can subscribe to it. No, I think it's forever. No? It's permanent. I'm not yeah. paying I don't know. So in time can I you download it. it on your phone and it moves on, on to my the iPad. iPad. On the yeah. iPad. Yeah, okay. For the phone, it's four ninety nine, but I don't want to paint on the phone. No, no, no. I don't know what iPad you guys have got, but I've got an iPad Pro with an Apple Pencil, and that allows you to actually draw on the iPad. But if you haven't yeah, got that, I, think that, so you know, I have that. Got as well. Let yeah. me ask her if I, I, I'm assuming you're going to, she's going to want you to have an Apple Pencil, but I don't know. So let me find out. I about think that. we need one. Yeah. Um, it's really cool. Uh, she has, we were just reviewing today, there are some perspective tools 
that are basically like, as, as we were discussing yesterday, Julia, are like cheating, right? Like where you don't really have to know perspective that much. <laughs> you know, I was like, wait a minute, I don't think I like this. <laughs> I don't think you're, we've taken all the hard part out of it. You could just press a button and this happened. You still have to, actually, you still have to figure stuff out. So it's not totally. Fantastic. You can see what I'm doing now. I'm kind of fiddling. I can't finish this because although I'm liking where this flower is going, even though I don't have a lot of detail yet and I haven't worked a lot, I'm kind of appreciating, um, kind of working around edges. So for example, let's see. I have this little teeny tiny brush. Now I'm taking some white and I'm kind of trying to create this edge a little bit, just right here, right? And then I'm, so I do a kind of contour line and now I'm, I'm brushing it out so that you can only really see the very edge of the line. I'm, I'm moving around a few places in doing that. That's helping. I'm also leaning on my painting and getting paint all over me. Don't do this at home, folks. So, so I this is real creative. Oh, wonderful. I think it's going to be great. I got to tell you, I have no stomach for procreate at all. So I will not be taking the class, but I'll be there to make sure she's, I'll be recording it. You don't course, have an iPad. Yeah, I just, and also just the idea, I, it's, it's distasteful to me. I don't know why. I don't think that's correct. I want to be clear. I don't think that's correct. It should not be distasteful to me. I totally recognize the value of it. I just can't get myself to do it. <laughs> like I can't get myself to want to do it. I, I don't know why I can't. I don't want to work on the computer. I just want to work with the tools. So... But I see the value of it. I totally get how amazing think, it is. I think for four lessons or three lessons, it's worth trying out. Absolutely. I do. I shouldn't be even talking And then you, now. you decide, then, then you can decide whether you like it or not. Right. At least but that's no. the way I'm approaching it. And I'll see whether I like it or not. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's really neat. And um, as some of you may have had, Emma, she's taught a bit before. She's my um, former student from Montana. Um, Although occasionally I still work with her again because she's recently come to the sad realization that nobody in her painting classes in her art school degree is going to actually teach her how to paint. They're just going to stand there and watch her paint and judge her on it. So, That's scary. She's pissed. I, but I told her that would happen. I, I said, do you remember I told you this when you were 12? And she's like, I do. I said, you're not gonna, they're not gonna teach you how to paint in school. They're gonna insist that you know how, and then they're gonna pit you against each other. And she's like, it totally sucks. I mean, she also is in Montana and that's Montana for you. I mean, this is classic, Sandra, you'll love this. She's studying French. So I said, please, 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 please spend a semester in France. You should. You should learn to speak French. You should take this time in college. That's a really great value to learn a language. You never have the time that you do when you're... Her stupid school doesn't do an exchange to France. Who doesn't do an exchange to France? <laughs> who, doesn't, like, who, who doesn't do an exchange to France? <laughs> I'm just like, you got to go to France. You can go and, to French Canada. Right? Like you need to go to like France because that's how you're going to like really get your French good. And she's loving French. And I'm like, take the time to learn French. That is something that college is totally valuable for. They won't teach you how to paint, but they will totally teach you to speak French. And then you go and you do an immersion course. But, but no. So then I was like, you know, you should just go. <laughs> you can go to the Sorbonne, you can go to the museums, you can like just paint in your little, I don't know, wherever you find to live. Um, it's like really, yeah, she's really having a come to Jesus moment with her school.
Um, yeah, I, I mean, eh, there's some things I like about this. There's some things I don't. You can see I'm now trying to lighten and darken things that can't really be lightened or darkened anymore because so they're starting to look a little bit blocky. So this is the moment when really one in oil should stop. Yes, you have to stop though. I yeah, have to stop, it'll all, mess it up, right? Because, yeah, and the reason- It's gonna be all gray. What? It's gonna be all gray otherwise. It'll be all gray, right? And why is it all gray? Because it's, it's wet and as I mix uh, and blend, um, mm -hmm. oh, there's one other thing I wanna do. Hold on just a second. Hold on. One more thing. There we go. Um, and you can see, see, I'm trying to get lighter back here. I can't because I've already got this paint down. And if I try to add white to it, it just gets grayer. See that? So I have to wait till this dries before I can really kind of fix this area. Here too. Seems to be lighter. You see a transition, blah, blah. But it's still a kind of in a pretty state. I like it. It's not a bad state to leave it. Um, yeah. Uh, I'd love to see where everybody else is going with this. Oh, I haven't come much further. I am too. Ooh, Pat, that. really interesting color choices. I like it. Add yeah, in your background. Like do it. I'm going to do. Go ahead. Put in your back. Put in a background. Next That'll week. be your last. Or maybe yeah. I'll do it. I'll do it over the week. Yeah. No, I would do it now. Actually, oh right, we've got five minutes left. Never yeah. mind. Yeah. <laughs> Julia, okay, excellent. This is good. So we're gonna keep we working on these, you guys, as we go along. Jackie, show me where you're at. Mm. Um, we'll keep working on these. Um, I was gonna say you've got time, but you totally here's, don't. Here's where I am. Let's see. Oh, nice, Jackie. No, that's Leah. <laughs> that one's me. Oh, nice, Jack. Actually, Jackie, that's wonderful. Mm. I know there's still more to do, but I love how you've handled this part here. I love uh, how this is looking. I love the sort of swirling things that are starting to happen up here. I like th there's there is there are a lot of good things. If you want, if you guys wanted to spend five more minutes, like if you wanted to go like a little bit longer. Um, I would go longer, long enough for each of you to add a background. Julia, you too, actually. If you wanted to, you could totally add a background in. Um, just go around the edge to help see. But if not, you can wait till next week and we'll work on it next week. Leo, can I ask you something completely different? Nothing to do yeah. with painting? Yeah. What, you know you had a new deck built. What did, how did you treat it? Uh, we did take pressure treated. We bought pressure treated wood. No, no, I meant uh, did you... Stay well, then it. you don't treat it. If oh, yeah, then you it. don't treat it. You can just use it. We didn't treat it at all. So oh, you should. No, so not pressure treated. Not no, pressure of course, treated. all decks are pressure treated in pine. No. They have to be. No. no, 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 no. There is pressure treated wood, and then there is like red wood. Red wood. Uh, yeah, that's a different species. But when yeah, you no. do pine, it's almost always pressure treated, no? It's uh -huh. no, not uh -huh. always. And in fact, uh -huh. during the pandemic, they kind of ran out of it. Uh -uh. I mean, our deck that we just did is redwood and it has no treatment. Well, because, but you will at some stage, otherwise it will get damaged. Yeah, I will. But I mean, the rest of our deck is- uh, Pressure treated? No, it's redwood and it has not been treated at all. Right. And it's 30 years old. Um, uh, we own for redwood, isn't it? But you want to, we're going to treat the redwood, I'm but it needs to super dry throughout. Yeah, so, I think all, all woods need to dry for a few months. Yeah, otherwise I, it rots from the inside if you treat it before it's totally dry. Right. Well, it's also not ready to absorb the, right. whatever you put on it. I want everybody to hold up their flowers. I put them in a way. Okay, I'll get my flower. Get your get flower. flower. Oh, yeah, these are starting to look really neat. These are starting to look really neat. Oh, yeah. Julia, hold it up. Oh, they look so Oh, nice. yeah. Oh, she I sort like of whipped in a background. All right. 
So this is what we're gonna do. These are Diana, wonderful. Like, who's, who's we're that? going to, I like all of these. We are going to keep working on these and other flowers next week. So anything that you do in the rest of class, that's what we will do next week. We're not gonna do a new flower. We will work on these flowers more. So we'll, so let it dry, let it sit there. And then we'll come back and talk about how do you finish something, right? And Sandra, I'm sorry, I love that piece. I love yeah. that piece. Thank you. I got, yeah. I might even buy it. Like that's how <laughs> I feel about it. Like that's how I feel about it. So I really do. And I'm not telling you that to be nice. You know, I'm not that nice. <laughs> <laughs> you are for this. <laughs> I'm only nice when it calls to be nice. Also, you guys are really rock stars. And I feel like you all just came and brought your A game today. So congratulations, really, really great work. Um, Pat, I'm excited by your piece. I think- I'm Are you seeing, kidding me? I know it's awkward right now, but I am seeing, uh, some, I'm seeing you make some decision-making in your brushwork. We'll just wait until next week, just wait. Can you Let see it, that? Um, that color it's kind of like a yeah kind of a greenish green sort of a, like short a spring tracy. green yeah 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 great work everybody wonderful to see you next week we have classes on tuesday wednesday thursday actually uh tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday and sunday and remember marie it's marie's last cat class so if you can make it i know julia you can't but if you can make it it'd be great to do that um just to have fun with her. And Jackie, congratulations on this new teacher that you found because I think she is, don't worry. I love that you're so scared, but are you also kind of excited? Like even after like going, oh, this is so hard and I don't know how to do this. Aren't you kind of a little excited? I mean, it's actually nice physically being in a studio after being locked indoors all that time right. anyway. Right. Yeah. And and also the learning that you'll get from this process. You are just pushing up to the next level. So wonderful work, everybody. Love Thank you for your help. All. Have a great rest of your day or your morning or whatever it is <laughs> where you are. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next week. And Julia, remember any class that you go to, it's still an hour earlier until the 27th. I'll try to send reminders out across the thread. Bye, you guys. Great work. Bye. Wonderful to see you. Bye, Thanks. guys.